Metzeke Svakek Saham. Thank you very much, House Chair. The Honorable Speaker of Parliament, Men Nosevue Mapisa Nakula, the Deputy President of the country and of the African National Congress, the Chief Whip of the Majority Party, which is the African National Congress, Maloko Apalamente E Trompehang Sichaba Kagakare to the South Africans watching this uh, debate to Melang. Musa Khutla Mukhatwa African National Congress Ufile Ufilwe Tukelo Limata Ahubusa Africa Borwa Isikantwa Khotza di Khutlang Ilikatato Lerato Libuikobo Bam Africa Amala Wasibilo Bao Banang Litsepho Khatlaho Libiz Butsepehi Huri Ritla Fetula Sidumo Sirodumo Sanaha Im Ritla Tukafata Matselo Abadudi ke ka mo in 2019 ba re neile tetla ya go busa na ga e gape re dira ya lo ile ka go rata na ga e e bile ile maikemisetso a rona gore ba dudi ba tlhoka nditirelo ba di fitlhele ka ponyo ya litlo ra tshepisa gore mo re sa fitlhela maitlhoma magolo a mogatlho o ke maikemisetso a mogatlho o busang go gata ka potlako mo ngwageng e le go tlisa ditirelo mo dina mo dina rona ra itse gore ga ra dira go tlala seatla e bile ra netefatsa gore re tla tsoletsa go lagano magareng ga rona le lona re lwantse botlhoka tiro tlala le le huma mo nageng e honorable members of parliament the african national congress adopted the african claims policy document way back in 1943 Leaders of our liberation movement demonstrated their commitment to the African claims to not only repel discriminatory legislation but advocate for the realization of various generational rights as further affirmed in the Freedom Charter. The constitution adopted in this parliament in 1996 is another important example of restoring the dignity of our people. Our constitution is a rights-based document guaranteeing not only political and civil liberties but also socio-economic and environmental rights. It is in this house that progressive legislation has been endorsed. Honorable Chair, our Bill of Rights in the Constitution guarantees every South African access to adequate basic services such as housing, water and sanitation, education and health provision, and social protection. In the last 28 years of the African National Congress-led government, we have managed to build more than 4 million houses. This ANC-led government expanded access to water and sanitation infrastructure to ensure that we restore the dignity of our people. Once again this year, the President Ramaphosa has committed that government is going to build more water infrastructure to serve the increasing South African population. Because it is our belief as the African National Congress that a permanent solution addressing the triple challenges of inequality, poverty, and unemployment is through education. The NC-led government has ensured that, that it, it dedicates its special attention to ECDs just to give a child a proper and quality foundation, we provided free education from the basic education to tertiary level. Several postgraduate students have received government funding through the National Research Foundation. Government also allocated the highest budget to education. We have realized even the injunction in the Freedom Charter. Thank you, honorable members that the doors of education and culture shall be, shall be open. This is a fu fundamental to empowering people to be their self-liberators. Honorable members, wealth and income distribution are an important part of restoring people's dignity. The NC-led government has adopted various policies to address wealth distribution, such as the triple BEE affirmative action policy, 
And most recently, the black industrialist policy have realized positive outcomes with an increasing number of black industrialists developed by, by our state. Some in this house have been calling for the scrapping of the triple BEE policy, arguing that it favors certain connected people in our society at the expense of our majority. Many of our people benefited from the triple BEE policy through the government public procurement system. The public procure, procurement system at the local level, government level, where most government projects take place, guarantees that 30% of the project value has to benefit local SMMEs, irrespective of whether the main contractor is a local company. Nationally and provincially, our government, led by the African National Congress, if I remind you, Departments have allocated 40%, 30%, and 7% of their procurement spent to women, youth, and persons with disabilities, respectively. All these are government's tries to ensure wealth distribution in our country and reduce inequalities based on race, class, and gender. We cannot run away from the fact that through the implementation of affirmative action, many of our excluded people are now in the executive and managerial position in the private sector because of this policy of the ANC-led government. We still have much work to do to address the white male dominance of executive position in listed companies in the GSE. <laughs> According to the Equality Commission, about 70% of top managers in the public sector are black, compared to over 70% of white top managers in the private sector. In addition, men hold 77% of top management position in both sectors. This implies that achieving gender equality in the workplace, particularly for executive roles, remains a significant problem. We are confident that inequality between men and women will be addressed as we continue to implement our transformative agenda. Honorable Chair, this ANC-led government is championing the policy of black industrialists for the benefit of those who do not understand the program of black industrialists the black industrialists are the black entrepreneurs who are starting industrial enterprise that generate value through the mass production of goods and services. These new industrial enterprises are majority black owned. The work of black industrialists is to maximize the economic potential of our country's capital assets for individuals who take part in the initiative. Our government has guaranteed financial support of up to 50, 50 million rands. For example, a microfinish, which is a manufacturing company in Pine Town, manufactures safety components of internal combustion engines, exports 98% of its production to the EU, the USA, and the United Kingdom. Honorable Chair, some men in our society think it is their God-given right to ill-treat and abuse women. Let me remind those who kill and abuse their wives, their sisters, and their girlfriends that Colonians 3 verse 19 says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Whilst Proverbs 31 verse 10 says, A woman is far more precious than jewels. Please take care of your women, take care of your sisters. Gender-based violence and femicide is a pandemic in our society. President Ramaphosa has committed that government the government to address the sketch in our society by developing a national strategic plan on gender-based violence and femicides. This strategic plan is committed to addressing income inequality, which is a source of conflict with women dependent on men. We must state that this has already begun to change in our society. Women today can provide more for, for themselves whilst men remain dependent. In our last ANC conference in December 2022, we committed that our government must ensure that survivors of GBVF are provided with their own homes to prevent the cycle of violence. It is our view that our communities have a role to play in addressing this cage. Many victims of gender-based violence and femicides have died. Our communities are hesitant to report such cases because we say we have no responsibility to intervene when two people in a relationship are fighting. This must stop so that we can be able to protect the rights of women and the girl child. Honorable members, we are the first country on the African continent to guarantee the protection of the rights of people with disabilities 
and the LGBTQIA plus community. Just recently, the African Commission on Human Rights and People's Rights, an independent expert body within the African Union, rejected an application by three non-governmental organizations for observer status because of their advocacy work on the human rights violation of LGBTQIA plus people in Africa. We, at times, tend to use our value system to deny this community their entitlements to protect their human rights as people. It can never be us as Africans who have enjoyed oppression and, discrim enjoyed oppression and discrimination for more than 350 years, who seeks to oppress and discriminate against the LGBTQIA plus communities. Our human rights are also the human rights of the people living with disabilities and the LGBTQIA plus communities. Lastly, South Africa, we love our beautiful land. Let's show the whole world we can bring peace and harmony. South Africa, we love you. Our Thank you very much. Land. Thank you. Let's show the whole world oh. we can bring peace you. in our land. Thank you. Honorable chapter. The next item on the order paper, no, no, honorable members, you can't sing when we are spe I'm speaking. The next item on the order paper is a motion in the name of Mr. J.S. Malema, the honorable Malema. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy President of the EFF and the leadership of the EFF, the people of South Africa. Let me greet all those who agree that indeed our democracy to work, we need to hold the executive accountable. People of South Africa, let me begin by extending our deepest gratitude for the massive support shown for the national shutdown, which was held on the 20th of March, 2023. The 20th of March marked one of the greatest national demonstrations post-1994, wherein thousands of our people registered their dissatisfaction of load shedding, unemployment, high levels of crime, gender-based violence, and lack of service delivery. Many of you affirmed the authority of the EFF to be superior to that of the President of South Africa and his entire cabinet combined by partaking in the shutdown because you cannot trust anything he and his government says. A majority of business remained closed, taxi ranks and buses were empty, no trains or trucks were moving on the day and even load shedding was suspended due to low level of electricity demand, proving that major industries that use electricity were not operational. The success and moral correctness of the national shutdown is proven by the fact that no one, not the state or the media, was able to dispute the logic for the national shutdown, and they all chose to attempt to divert and dilute its message by creating a myth of anarchy and destruction. We salute you for your support and we salute you, all protesters, for their discipline and commitment to peaceful protest. We remain resolute on our demand for Mr. Sir Ramaphosa to resign as the President of South Africa and our people want reliable supply of electricity for their businesses, livelihoods and for the economy to survive. The economic freedom fighters proved once more who is in charge in this country. When you said to business, is business as usual, open your shops, I said close. They closed. I'm in charge. I've got you by scrotum. There's nothing you can do, nothing. All of you combined, 
you can scream any how you want. Once more, I demonstrated to you black opposition, a white opposition with the ruling party combined. I'm in charge. And I want that to sink. You will tweet every day, you will call press conference every day, you will bring soldiers and police because the men in charge said it shut down South Africa and it was shut down. Whether you like it or not, in your cocoons, you are admitting that when the president speaks, that is a motion of no confidence, by the way. When the president speaks and say, open, I will protect you, they say, we can't trust you. They closed. Even this one of the tops ran around everywhere saying, open, open, I'll protect you, but uh, uh, when, uh, you never protect us any day. Why would you protect us today? They never listened to him. They closed. This one's ran to court and said, no, don't close. We have got an order, imaginary order. Cape Town, there won't be anything. Don't close. We're in charge here. Cape Town is ours. Cape Town is white. They can't do anything in the white area. They said to them, the business of Cape Town, we can't trust you. They closed because they knew who to trust. The Economic Freedom Fighters has tabled a motion of no confidence against the Speaker of the National Assembly, Ms. Nosevio Mapisa Ngakula. We did this because it has become clear that we are dealing with an unrepentant delinquent who abuses her power and violates the rule of the National Assembly and the Constitution. What we saw on the 9th of February 2023, when the Speaker called members of this House animals and violated the Constitution and the rules of the National Assembly when she allowed the police to invade Parliament and made it worse by calling on the security forces of South Africa to enter the chambers to intimidate peaceful members of Parliament is not something that we can take light. When the National Assembly convened a sitting for the presidency budget vote delivered by Mr. Ramaphosa in June 2022, we fearlessly stood up to demand that the only director of Untabanyoni estate tells the country where he got the U.S. dollars that were stolen at Palapala Farm. She decided to de generate and instruct the protection officer to assault members of parliament, including assaulting women members of parliament. Women members of parliament were also sexually assaulted because when they were being violently removed, beaten and pushed, their private parts were touched by men. We told the speaker in the same sitting that this is happening, but she ignored us because her sole mandate is to protect Ramaphosa. Whenever Mr. Ramaphosa, Ramaphosa is being held accountable, she chooses violence. She chose, chose to abuse her powers, violate the constitution and the rules of the National Assembly. She is happy when we leave these chambers in the hands of men who are unashamed to violate women members of parliament, touch our private parts and harass such that we end up in hospital seeking medical treatment. It is this speaker who denied a cigarette ballot vote on the establishment of the Section 89 Committee into Palapala Farm, despite members being threatened with removing removal by the ruling party should they decide to vote with their conscience. Ms. Nozivir Mabisa Ngagula has entered the office of the Speaker with a predetermined agenda of protecting Mr. Ramaphosa from any and all scrutiny at all costs. She has degenerated this parliament into a place of violence, censorship, and an arena where the constitution is disrespected and violated. She has no shame that women were sexually assaulted under her watch as a female speaker. Mrs. Mabisa Nakula is a mistake of history and a step backwards for women leadership in this country. As the EFF, we table this motion of no confidence in the speaker because under her, the gains of our democracy are being reversed at a rapid rate. If she is to continue as a speaker, then the ruling party and its president will continue to loot state resources, launder money, evade tax, and violate the constitution without any accountability. A lack of tolerance for African opposition in this parliament 
is not accept acceptable and reaffirms to us that she is the speaker of a puppet government that suffers from a severe inferiority complex. As the EFF, we have long withdrawn any respect that they have offered uh, to her. And this was made final when she resorted, she resorted to calling democratically elected African members of parliament animals. She will go down the same empty path of her predecessor, Ms. Balek Mbete, who is now in the dustbin of history for the same conduct she's exhibiting in this sixth democratically parliament. There is no future, there is no legacy, and there is no honor in defending corruption. And Mrs. Nosivio Mapisa Nakula will remain, will learn this harsh lesson when we remove her politically, her political party from power in 2024. She will be remembered as an instrument of corruption, violence, and the descent of this parliament into heaven for dictatorship who deploy the military to suppress peaceful protests. Ms. Nosivio Nakula is a tool for a president who has failed to lead South Africa and is fast taking this country towards collapse. She is nothing but a puppet who, whose legacy will be enhancing the sexual assault of women and, and enabling corruption and crushing the voices of accountability in parliament. Like a handler, she must be removed and she must be removed now. Thank you.